After being driven out of Eridu by the Anunnaki, the humans began to wander aimlessly around the world. But something unexpected happened. Some Anunnaki and Ijiji secretly had love affairs with humans. The children generated between the Anunnaki and humans were capable of amazing things, being considered demigods that would leave their names eternalized in legends of several peoples. Some of the most famous were Gilgamesh, Hercules, Perseus, and Samson. But the children of the Ajiji with humans were bestial and evil giants who became forever known as Nephilim. They usually lived in hill caves, but attacked human dwellings and caused much trouble for the Anunnaki. Even without the Anunnaki's support, the humans flourished and built cities of their own. Without the Anunnaki to dictate rules, the humans went into decadence. Thievery, debauchery, and violence were common in the cities, and it seemed impossible to control human barbarism. But everything was about to change. The orbit of the planet Nibiru was approaching the Earth, an event that only happened every 3,600 years. The Anunnaki knew of the impending disaster, as Nibiru would reverse the Earth's magnetic poles, causing earthquakes, volcano eruptions, and tsunamis. The Anunnaki's final decision was to abandon humans, return to their ships, and flee into space, where they would remain orbiting planet Earth until the natural disasters were over. Against the wishes of his advisors and family members, King Enki decided that the human race deserved a chance to save itself from the cataclysm. He commissioned Utnapishtim, a good-natured man, to create a giant ship called the Preserver of Life, in preparation for a giant flood that would end life on Earth. Even in the face of the mockery of humans, Utnapishtim dutifully carried out Enki's instructions and built the ship. Utnapishtim also sheltered and protected the essence of all the animals on Earth. Enki ordered that the technology of the Anunnaki be used to collect the DNA of one male and one female from each animal specimen found. When the great ship was finally ready, the signs of approaching Nibiru could be felt all over the world. Those who had mocked Utnapishtim now feared the result of their arrogance. As predicted, the Earth was devastated by an unprecedented disaster. Earthquakes ripped the surface of the Earth, setting up new continents. Volcanoes spewed lava and glowing smoke, incinerating everything in their path. Finally, a torrential rain raised the level of the oceans, which even covered the summit of some mountains. The splendorous city of Eridu and the Garden of Eden were destroyed, as were the terrible giant Nephilim. But despite these horrors, Utnapishtim's ship held out and floated until the water returned to normal levels, unveiling a reborn world. With the help of the Anunnaki's technology, life on Earth was restored. Powerful new cities were gradually built, such as Babylon, Hattusa, and Knossos. Humans revered the Anunnaki again, worshipping them as gods and building temples in their honor. The human race occupied the new territories that arose after the Flood, creating distinct civilizations each representing the Anunnaki as deities according to local beliefs. But peace was again threatened, as Enki's younger brother, named Enlil, wanted to be Earth's chief ruler. The Anunnaki allowed humans to have their own kings in their cities, but Enki was the sovereign of Earth with the title King of Kings. This position aroused Enlil's envy. The rivalry between Enki and Enlil became greater and greater, mainly because Enlil disliked humans and despised the fact that his brother had helped them survive the Flood. Enlil believed that humans were mere laborers with limited intelligence. He never agreed with the accelerated development that the human race achieved with the Anunnaki's help. To placate the situation, Enki suggested a political marriage between his son Dumazid and Inanna, Enlil's granddaughter. But Enki's eldest son, named Marduk, did not accept this idea since he intended to unseat his father and uncle and assume the title of King of Kings himself. Marduk devised a plan that caused the accidental death of his brother Dumazid. With the end of the arranged marriage, the enmity between Enki and Enlil escalated. Marduk was punished for the crime and exiled to a lonely desert. When he was informed of the disputes between the Anunnaki living on Earth, King Anu of Nibiru decided to intervene. 
Anu pardoned Marduk, who was released from exile and allowed to be among the Anunnaki. Anu also ended the feud between Enki and Enlil. He promised the two brothers and other Anunnaki of royal lineage a territory for each to rule on earth. Enlil was given the region of Mesopotamia, Enki got Egypt, Inanna got Persia, and Ninma was given the Sinai region. The pardon given to Marduk did not entitle him to rule a territory. Disgruntled, Marduk demanded Babylon, a city in which he became the main deity. Marduk decided to challenge the other Anunnaki, and contrary to Anu's orders, taught his human subjects the secret of producing iron weapons and armor, creating the best equipped army at the time. Thirsty for power, Marduk ordered the construction of hanging gardens in Babylon to replicate the splendor of the ancient Garden of Eden, which had been devastated in the flood. Not only that, Marduk also ordered the construction of a great tower that was to reach the clouds of heaven, defying King Anu. The Tower of Babel quickly reached an impressive height, as the construction was intended to overshadow all the other Anunnaki buildings on Earth. The outrage was not ignored by the remaining Anunnaki, and each leader started preparing human armies to face Marduk. Obeying Marduk's orders, the Babylonian armies marched out to conquer and enslave other nations. This was the beginning of a great wave of wars and conflicts between the strongest peoples of the Bronze Age. The Anunnaki constantly changed sides and formed alliances with each other, leading to chaos and destruction in many major cities. Marduk's armies managed to dominate Egypt and Sinai. To confront the other Anunnaki, Marduk humiliated or annihilated the conquered humans. With no other way out, Enki and his brother Enlil joined forces. With the authorization of King Anu, they used the technology of the Anunnaki's weapons and ships to fight Marduk, an extreme decision with many detrimental consequences to the world. The destruction caused by the Anunnaki's weapons led to multiple natural disasters. Volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis destroyed entire civilizations. Crops disappeared due to air contaminated by volcanic ash, with famine becoming ubiquitous. Desperate humans abandoned cities or formed marauding groups to attack more fertile lands. These grim events were recorded as the Bronze Age collapse. After causing such a catastrophe on the world, the Anunnaki realized that the wars would never end and could destroy the entire planet Earth. To halt the debacle, Anu ordered all the Anunnaki to return to Nibiru and let the Earth be ruled by humans. Some human leaders descended from the Anunnaki were chosen to rule the rest, until the day when the Anunnaki will return to Earth to choose the people worthy of being taken to Nibiru, where they will live forever as immortals.